This is a racing car, and I'm about to attempt the craziest challenge I've ever tried. Learning how to drift with absolutely no experience. The plan is to practice with a bunch of different challenges and ending with an extremely difficult test. Drifting in a custom race track. And without wasting a single second, I immediately jumped in a race car for a practical demonstration. This guy has been drifting cars for 20 years, and that's why he's gonna be the teacher for today. And just so you know, I have never drifted in my life and I've never been in a drifting car. So I was a little bit scared, actually extremely scared. And I had absolutely no idea what to expect. But besides the fact that the teacher almost ran over my friend and filmmaker, I absolutely fell in love with drifting at first sight. And it was weird, but it felt like having perfect control in a situation in which you are, by definition, out of control. And in this exact moment, I also realized that drifting is not only an extreme way to have fun, but it's actually extremely useful on the street. I mean, think about it. This teaches you how to control the car in any situation. And that's why I couldn't wait to try it. The first challenge is all about learning to drift to the left side. And the absolute worst thing that can happen is me hitting those orange blocks. After a warm-up lap driving the car normally, I attempted the first drift. And my plan was simple, steering as much as I could while accelerating. And obviously, I miserably failed. Same story for the following attempt. The goal today is not to spin or make circles, unfortunately. I'm pretty good at that. But instead, I need to try drifting for as long as possible. And to do that, there are a bunch of factors you need to consider that I knew nothing about. But I kept trying. And after a few minutes, I started sort of realizing what I was doing. I learned that you need to understand how the weight shifts between rear and front wheels in order to control the car. And most importantly, how to manage the accelerator. If you give too much gas while entering a turn, the car will spin. And if you don't accelerate enough, the car won't drift or the drift won't last long. In general, as soon as you stop accelerating, the car will go back straight and stop the drift. While if you brake, if you brake, you completely lose control of the vehicle. This means that once you actually decide to drift, there is no coming back. But at least my morale was high, because after practicing a lot, I slowly started to get more confident, even if I kept failing every once in a while. Then something unexpected happened. For some weird reason, the teacher decided to trust me enough and let me drive the car alone. And here is when I really started to have fun. Once the fear was gone, I started taking more risks. And this resulted in pretty bad fails, but also a bunch of decent drifts. I was still miles away from getting good at it, but at least I was way better than when I started. And most importantly, between water, steering wheels, tires screaming and engine sounds, I was having the time of my life. And I got extremely tired. Logically, after drifting to the left, I needed to learn how to drift to the right. And this is a completely different story. It felt totally unnatural and I was extremely scared to hit the orange block. But while practicing more, I also understood a few things I was completely missing. In order to drift the best way, you need to be extremely gentle. What I mean by that is that I kept steering a lot while giving gas and it was clearly not working. A slight and rapid movement should be the best way to do it. And once you do that, if you are drifting, you let the steering wheel slide between your hands while keep accelerating. And just like that, I was drifting perfectly, kind of. I still couldn't maintain the drift for a long distance and I failed a few times too. But the movement was slowly becoming more intuitive. And with that, my drifts were looking way cooler compared to the beginning. I was basically exhausted at this point, but I still had so many things to fix and improve. And so, after a quick break, it was time for me to try the hardest challenge of the day. Drifting in a custom racetrack. And this is where things got extremely harder than before. In a racetrack, you not only have to drift in one direction and let the car adjust itself, but you also need to control the car to avoid crashing against the obstacle of the next turn. Well, this is complicated. I jumped in the car with the teacher for a warm-up lap, and after realizing how bad I was, I started trying. This time I was actually extremely scared because I had no idea how to change quickly direction while drifting. I tried for a while and after failing a few times or completing extremely short drifts, with the help of the teacher I realized the most important lesson of the day. Your hands don't control the direction of the drift. 
your eyes too. As humans, we tend to walk or steer in the same direction we are looking with our eyes. And it's pretty hard to believe because this is a subconscious movement. But when I first tried, I realized how powerful this tip actually is. While entering a turn, you don't have to look straight in front of you, because that will cause you to go kinda straight. You actually need to look at the opposite end of the turn. And while turning, you need to look like 30 feet ahead. This is absolutely uncomfortable, because you're not actually paying attention to where you're going at a certain moment, you only have to care about where you'll be in 2-3 seconds, which is mind-blowing. Most of the times I forgot to turn my head and look, or I've been looking in the wrong direction. But when I actually started to combine all the tips I learned during the day, I also started to get the first really good results. Let's go! Let's freaking go! This is so exciting! This is so exciting, that's amazing! I wasn't expecting to like this thing so much. And there is so much stuff going on while you're drifting. Turning the head, steering with a quick slight movement while giving gas, and letting the steering wheel slide between your hands without holding it. Then absolutely avoid the instinct to break or take your foot off the gas. But actually, in the middle of the drift, push the accelerator as much as you can to keep drifting for as long as possible. Let's be clear, all this is way easier said than done. But after drifting in the racetrack for 20 minutes straight, I felt I was on another planet. There was just me, the asphalt and the car. And even though I was getting extremely, I mean seriously extremely tired, and my hand was giving up on me, I stopped even thinking about the fear, and it felt really good. I kept going for a few laps, every time trying to fix the mistakes I was making the lap before, until the guys told me I had to stop because I was literally losing the rear bumper of the car. And then I jumped on the car once again for the final laps. This was the time to give everything and risk it all. And even though I still failed a few times, I started to understand how to change direction while drifting. To the left and then to the right. After 8 hours of practice, my drifts were looking way better than ever before. And even though my hand was seriously hurting at every turn, I was having so much fun. There is still so much work I need to do, because I can't beat 20 years of experience in 8 hours. But I improved, and that's probably the most important thing. Well, my hand is completely gone, but I didn't kill anyone, I didn't break the car, and most importantly, I had so much fun. But there is one last thing I wanna try. Skill 69. It's all about practice.